do you do you have much downtime at all? No, no, it's it's like I will, I, you know, I there's absolutely no way that you can um, complain. It's like when the people who get paid twenty million dollars to make a movie complain that that there's paparazzi or something. It's like you huh. can't you can't complain when you're given the the life to be creative, and if it means that you have to be, you know, that you not that you have to have no downtime, I would rather be just busy the rest of my life every hour of every day doing something creative than than having downtime but having what I do for a living be something that I didn't necessarily enjoy. So there you know, I, I love it but it's definitely um it's hard because you start to wonder like I think a year and a half ago I started to wonder what vacation would be considered and I would get home and work for a long time and then I would think, you know, oh tour is gonna feel like a vacation and then it does for a month huh. and then and then that becomes work you know and then you're yeah. then you're out on tour and you're like oh I, as soon as i get home my bed is gonna feel you know better than it ever has and it does for a few months and then you're very restless because anymore i don't even know i don't really know what it the the mindset is of being totally yeah. like done relaxed, with something not having everything done right yeah it's it's weird but i can't i I really couldn't complain, and I don't want to complain, you know? Yeah. Uh, I was looking at, at your your show listings, and you got, you got like, a little three-day tour coming up with uh, the 26th of the Croc Rock, which I'm um, real excited for. And then it seems like you might have a little bit of a break through the beginning of September, and then yeah. you're going on tour with Thursday, right? Yeah, Thursday in Fall Troy. Thursday and then, in Fall um, Troy. Huh? How long is that tour, do you know? I think it's between two and three weeks. I think it's from, I feel like it's the 10th of October until, uh, actually, wait, when is it? Maybe it's the 8th. I think it's three weeks. I think it's between two and okay. three weeks. And and then we have a, a, a small headlining stint with uh, the band Annuals. Oh, good deal. Yeah. <clears throat> um, do, you, do you like headlining more, or, or would you rather be playing like before like Thursday and Paul Troy with them like which do you kind of prefer personally um I don't know I think each each you know position definitely has a real uh set of positive and negatives when you headline you know that the people who will be watching you a hundred percent of them because you know if they're still there by the end of the night they're yeah, they're there to see you. they want to see you and they want to sing along with you and they they are willing. You don't necessarily have to tailor what you're playing to please a certain demographic. Yeah. Whereas, you know, when you're when you're opening for someone or you're direct support for somebody, you know, at least for us, because we do have a varied style of music. Before we go out on a yeah. tour, we kind of decide, well, what kind of band are we going to be this time? Like, are we going to be the heavier band? Are we going to be the you know folkier band? What really? I I never even thought of that you guys would be doing. That's pretty wild that you yeah. that you that you have yeah. such a range that you can tailor to fit different bands you're playing with. <laughs> well, for uh, basically for Thursday, you know, well, I guess for these shows that we're playing with Coheed in Cambria at the end of this month, yeah. we're we uh, we know we're going to be playing a lot of our heavier songs and a lot more prog, mm-hmm. and and I think that on Thursday it's also going to be that kind of thing, and then you know when we headline, it's going to be in the middle. And then, you know, uh, as, when we played with, um, the last tour we did was with um, Me Without You. So we knew that we'd we'd be given a chance to be playing softer music. So it was a lot more groove and and folk and Dixieland type of stuff. And wow. which we still, you know, like to add in uh, the, the wild card songs just because there's no reason to, like... To, you do want to stick out to a certain degree. You don't necessarily want to be a sore thumb because, you you know, it's like introducing anything to the body. If, if it shocks your system, you, you'll throw it up. But if it's something that you can handle, you know, um, the audience, if, if you give them some gateway into what you're doing, if they're fans of Thursday and, and uh, you know, Fall Troy, and you give them something that they're used to and then you take them into what else you do it's a lot easier than if you just say this is what we're doing no matter where we are 
and yeah. you know we're going to play these songs no matter what. And I I think that it can be good and bad, but I think that luckily we have a, a varied enough style that we can kind of change who we are from time to time. Yeah, that's that's pretty awesome, man. Yeah, it's, um, it, it's fun. I mean, when you when you have to play, not not to you know speak badly about anyone, but when you have to play with bands that are like scary kids scaring kids, and then you have to play with bands like Say Anything and Save the Day, and then you have to play with Fall of Troy, and then Coheed and Cambria, it's like you know that those fans are very different, and they there's a lot of people who like all those kind of bands, but you're you would not necessarily find someone who's way into the fall of Troy who is also, uh, you know, a save the day fan. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So you find, you find a way to appeal to as many people as you can without changing, you know, the foundation of what you do. Okay. Um, a question about the website. Um, have Mm -hmm. you guys been working on the website at all? The, the actual, your actual website? Um, uh, the guys who are the main, you know, art and programming for the website right now haven't been doing the website because they've been working on the music video with me. Okay. That's that's basically the next thing to move on to because it's supposed to kind of be like an ever-expanding world. I think you guys are probably busy with a lot of things, but I've been checking it regularly and, like, it still hasn't even added uh, Act 3 yet onto the design. Oh, I know. So I was just kind of curious. I know. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's tough when you do something that's kind of that graphic in intense that yeah. there wasn't necessarily, as far as the coding goes, a lot of, you know, back-end database work. So doing, mm-hmm. um, updates and things like that are very manual. So, okay. um, I kind of, and since none of, nobody in the band is, you know, can code PHP or, Oh, anything yeah. like that we can we rely on on them and since they are you know they've gotten very busy with everything let alone the stuff that they still do with us so i really would like to get that um worked on as soon as possible but i i definitely have no idea when they'll be able to get to it all right um i i was uh, um what how do i want to ask is are you going besides the website are you going to have the other mediums that try to help convey or add depth to the story of the deer hunter. I forget who the uh, the artist was, but I remember reading that you're working on having like a uh, almost like a graphic novel or an art book to go along with. Oh Act well, there's actually there's actually um, uh, in the special edition for Act Three. Okay. There was a book for Act Two. Um, oh, okay. That book that we were working on, it came out with that, and uh, they only made a thousand of them, but it sold really well. And uh, so now it's kind of like we're trying to figure what, you know, we don't necessarily want to just do another special edition because that kind of gyps the people who went out and bought the special edition, you know, limited to a thousand that they wanted to own yeah. something that was limited. So now it's kind of trying to figure out what's the next thing that we can do where we can, you know, include that book and. Uh, you know, we're we're talking about doing a vinyl, and also um, at some point we would like to, you know, find a way to release a sort of a box set with Acts 1, 2, and 3 and a lot of artwork to go along with them. And, you know, wow. one thing that I'm doing right now is the video that I'm working on for Act 3 is very much a story-based and, and art-based video. So, um, you know, I'd like... I would like to keep it to doing things like that and do that as often as I can. It's a little hard because there's absolutely no funding, you know. Um, yeah, yeah. And and when you have something that you want to keep your bar pretty high for the, you know, the the the, the um the artistry or the the quality you don't of work. No sacrifice quality. Yeah, exactly. So that's I mean the Act Two book took the two years in between. Act two coming out and Act three coming out. It took literally all two years of that to just finally get it done, and it went through the hands of four different artists, and um, wow. it was like colored. It, it it was finally colored.